just told you about one of the songs I'm about to drop. So even that, I'm thinking about the content that comes with that. But right now, I'm getting my reps in with the music that I have out right now to make sure that I get ready for that song. When you're independent, you don't have access to $2 million of marketing fund or capital. If you think about the traditional artist who has that type of budget, they can drop a song in one video and 80 people in the building are working on their behalf and spending the money to make sure that the artist hits every point. So now the only way to compete with that is marketing where you're making 80 videos and competing with the 80 to 100 people working on behalf of that artist and you're telling your story in different ways. If you keep choosing to be independent right now in your career, you gotta do independent things. Not, not saying you can't have a team, but like you have to take more responsibility in your career and the way things go. What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you stream your podcast here at the intersection of creativity and currency. And as you know, we love to bring you people whose paths represent no labels. They're doing it different. They're going their own path. And man, I feel blessed to have someone on who like, is not just moving and I like the path that they're moving in. But I, I'm a general, legit fan, man. I've been a fan of this guy for years. You have clients, you, you hear their music, whatever, but like it gets played in the household and you don't know about it, man. <laughs> like it, it's not plays for vanity. Like I really rock with Manny Wells, man. Pleasure to have you, bro. Man, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, appreciate it, bro. I'm, I'm a fan. I watch it. I've watched it since probably your eighth video. <laughs> and now like I love, I love what's happening. I love being a part of your story in some way, shape, or form, so. Yeah. For sure, for sure, man. Speaking of story, man, like, actually, that's a, that's a beautiful segue. Your story, right, you, you consider yourself Afrobeat slash R&B fusion, right? Mm-hmm, Afro right? soul. Afro soul, okay. So, like, you've gotten better and better at tracking your story, but you've always, like, captured versions of your story over time, whether it was in music. I remember it's been maybe about two or three years you did a documentary. Or you remember that mini doc? I don't know I don't know if it had a name, but you were like, you know, playing, mm -hmm, going mm -hmm, through all mm -hmm. that stuff. Uh-huh. Like how do you, as someone who is now, I feel like is killing it, especially in your drama, you don't see people do content like you do yeah. content and, and storytelling. How do you look at content and helping people connect with you? I feel like we need content for people to connect with us, especially like if you're, if you're like an independent artist and uh, when you're independent, you don't have, you usually don't have access to $2 million of marketing fund or capital. And so if, if you think about the traditional artist who has that type of budget, they can drop a song in one video and 80 people in the building are working on their behalf and spending the money to make sure that the artist hits every point. So now the only way to compete with that is marketing where you're making 80 videos and competing with the 80 to 100 people working on behalf of that artist and you're telling your story in different ways. So like art, uh, independent artists need content and as soon as I realized that I was like okay let me let me embrace this and let me just figure it out because it's possible and how do I have fun while doing it? Because when you're an artist and when you're like super creative and dope, you just feel like you don't need to do it, mm -hmm. you know? But I was like, nah, I need to do this. So let me just figure it out. So what was the, what was the moment that made you think that way? Like, what, do you remember something specifically that made you go like, nah, I gotta kind of start moving differently here? Um, I think like Luna's ex, not because he was independent, or not because I thought he was independent, obviously he's not. But like, I remember in like, so whenever things pop, I'm the type of artist to figure out why it popped. Like, I don't, most things don't happen by mistake. You know, like, oh my God, I just sat in my room. And sometimes it does, like you just sit in your room. And, but even there's, there's certain elements in you sitting in your room that made it go crazy. And so uh, Lil Nas X, when he did the, um, what was that song? Old Town Road. Old Town Road, yeah. When that joint went crazy and he did the memes and it was on, as soon as I saw that article, I made TikTok. I think that was probably like 2019. 
I read an article about it. I made TikTok. I just put my first video on TikTok. I didn't even like whatever. And so I started hearing about how like musically was going down and TikTok was like a thing. And so that's why I made it. And in my mind, I was like, if he's able to do that, like, why can't I? Like, I play, I sing, I can rap, I produce, I can perform my ass off. Can I say that? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, <laughs> talk your talk. Right? <laughs> I can perform my ass off. So, like, why can't I just figure this content thing out? So, yeah, that's at least that's the earliest thing I can remember. You mentioned yeah, like a lot of artists who like have that talent in space, the musicality, all that stuff. They struggle with feeling like they even need to do things like content. And you are one of those artists that that have all those things. How do you manage it that like, hey, I'm still creating like good music, real music It's not necessarily for the algorithms. But then maybe you like learn some things, understanding how things move. Uh, how does how do you think through all of this? I don't know, bro. For me, it was like you're choosing to be independent. <laughs> so if you don't, if you're not independent, maybe you might be able to get away with the regular artsy stuff. Be cute. Think about having a grid on your Instagram. <laughs> that shit is stupid. It does doesn't matter like anymore. And so for me, it's like, all right, if you keep choosing to be independent right now in your career, you got to do independent things. Not, not saying you can't have a team, but like you have to put on more, you have to take more responsibility in your career and the way things grow. So for me, I just took that part and I was like, I'm going to make content and I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to suck. And I'm going to miss the first hundred shots until I make one. As soon as I made one, I made another and I made another and then it was like, I'm up and then I'm selling out tours. I'm like, okay, let me go back in the gym. I'm, I'm right now. I'm back to shooting again and so like now I'm having fun. It's 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 fun, but it's it get, it gets frustrating sometimes too because it's like, you know your shit fire, like I know I got the heat. Like I just told you about one of the songs I'm about to drop. So even that, I'm thinking about the content that comes with that, but. Right now, I'm getting my reps in with the music that I have out right now to make sure that I get ready for that song. Mm. That's a good way to look at it, though. I don't think a lot of artists think about that, right? Like, if I take the time out to sharpen the skill set with this music that, you know, I still think is good, maybe isn't what I think is going to compare to something that might be coming out, I will be better by the time that actually gets here instead of yeah. trying to figure it out with the song or the project that I might think yeah. is the one to go. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, with that being said, I heard, what was your, your first video that like you felt like, okay, nah, I see it. So it, it's two sides. There was a, there was a cover. Oh no, actually then, now that I think about it, I remember my, it wasn't even viral. It hit like 30K and it was, it was a couple dancing to floating and I reposted it, but I was like, wait for it. And that hit like maybe 60K or something. And I was like, oh, okay. And that felt good. So I just kept like, it could be unhealthy, but I just kept chasing that high, really. <laughs> I, just, I kept chasing that high. And um, yeah, while that was happening, I was paying attention to like Nick D, who I would just have conversations with. And like, I saw a story, that's when he was still in the van. And I was like, dog, that's so fire. Like, <laughs> So yeah, that was like my first moment. And then recently, um, after that, I did covers. They they did good. I covered like Essence, and then people started comparing me to Thames. And I'm like, yeah, I don't even know the stories, but it's cool, whatever. Um, and yeah, I did I did some reaction joints where I played my my song for my friend, and she lost her mind. She was like, what is this? So people enjoyed that experience man i think um <laughs> we we've gone back and forth about like your space right the, the afro beats the afro soul like the growth of that marketplace and you're somebody who is really positioned for that growth right you even see a lot of 
like labels, I'm sure you're aware. Like you see them start to sign more artists, right? Yeah, a conversation so, so it's a about self fulfilling this. prophecy at this point too, yeah. right? Because like we saw it happen naturally, but now people are invested because they think it's gonna happen, meaning they're gonna put more money in, meaning it's gonna grow. And I think you perfectly, uh, are perfectly positioned as one of those people to benefit from that growth. What is it like to be in America though, right? Versus coming from overseas in your space. I think, I think that, I don't mean, I think that being in America is part of my superpower. Um, but it makes things harder because for, for any, for a sound to go up, you have to connect with the root of that sound. Hence, Lil Nas X did the remix with Billy, oh, Billy Ray Cyrus, yeah. The okay. combo is the fusion of hip hop yeah. and country. So he had to go pay homage. But me being Nigeria, yes, there's a diaspora market, but I just always felt like I needed to go home and reconnect with the root of my sound. But I wasn't able to because of my travel, um, my travel situation. And, but instead of always complaining about it, I just, I just accepted it. And I, and I realized that it was, it was part of my story. And so I just started telling that story. And the more I told that story, the more I realized that was my superpower. Because even if you're not an artist, if you're like, I realized that more people are going through that. And they're, they don't have to be African. There's Latinos going through that. There's Indians. Like, that's why we did a skit. We were like, have you heard of a black, um, black illegal immigrant? Like, people didn't know that's possible, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And for me, it's like, okay, how do I figure out creative ways to tell my story, you know? So I accepted, I accepted it, yeah. But you finally did go home. Yeah, which was dope. What was that like? That was amazing, man. The show, our show sold out in an hour. I was on the way from Ibadan. Ibadan is like another state in, in Nigeria. I was on the way back and I announced it in the car. By the time I got home, it was done. Dang. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> and that, that made me realize that we're like, we're really building a global things. And so when I think about my brand and my music, I think global. And that's why I asked y'all that, that question about the Mr. Beast. It's like, what is, what does the artist version of that look like? Because he's extremely global. And so I'm thinking on a global scale, I'm thinking like I have, I have goals and dreams of, of doing things beyond music. Music will always be the core and the root, but like, this is global. Yeah. yeah. And it's not, it doesn't stop with me. Like I want to, I want to be able to, I want to be positioned to help other artists who are willing to help them figure out their like path as well. Yeah. But what's so dope about the, the show is, I don't know if you remember, but like our very first campaign meeting, I don't know if you was on that call, Sean. And I remember we was, I was like asking you like, yo, like what's the goal of everything? Like how many views, whatever you want. You was like, man, I don't know if you can quantify it, but I just want enough attention that I can go home and do a sold out show. And yeah. I was like, mm. and at the time it was like, you know, you don't, we don't, yeah. you don't usually get goals. Like it's very like straightforward. I want to hit a number. I want to, I want to hit something, but it sounded like even back then you were kind of thinking beyond the numbers and be like, hey, I want to, to do just enough marketing to have a, a, a impact somewhere yeah, yeah. to be able to do something. So to see you come back full circle and actually make yeah. that happen has been like really cool, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I've been I've been having a lot of those moments where like people are reminding me of things I said, even with the content, I was talking to my friend and she was like, yo, two years ago when we, we met up and you told me you were gonna figure out content. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn. Cause I'm just I'm the most confident person I know. And so <laughs> If I want to, like, I'm going to figure any, I'm going to do anything I want to do, and I'll fail until I figure it out. Yeah. So, like, I've been having a lot of those moments where it's, like, full circle, and people remind me like that. I was like, damn, I did say that. I yeah, do you did say that, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's take a quick second to talk about the elephant in the room. If you're an artist trying to grow, we already know what your goal is, a thousand true fans. Everybody talks about it, but how do you actually make that happen? How do you get those fans it's not just about getting views. You gotta push people further down the funnel. So let's talk about it. Number one, do you have these people's data, right? Do you 
have the ability to text and build highly engaging relationships with these people, can you boost your Spotify plays to actually have engaged users, not those surface level playlisting plays? Well, guess what? Feverfan is a platform that allows you to do all of those things in one. So it's not overwhelming. You don't have to switch and have all these different logins and switch all your LinkedIn bios. You have even a LinkedIn bio tool that you can do. So everything is done in one place. So not only do you grow your fans, you do it for less work. How about that? Check out foreverfanmusic.com because we know it's not about views for the day. It's about getting fans who will be there forever. Foreverfanmusic.com. Let's get back to this video. Was there any concern of not being received well by the people that you wanted to, to receive you well at the root of that sound? Not really, because some of them are more Nigerian than they are. <laughs> I still speak Yoruba, I still speak PG, and I still like, like I'm still tapped in. Yeah. So me not being there physically was the only thing separating us. I cook better than a lot of them. <laughs> <All right. laughs> like, it's confidence, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so it's like, I wasn't worried about that. I was just like, I was mostly worried about when I'd get there. I'm like, bro, I want to go today. And today was turned into like 19 years. Yeah, that was a long wait. Yeah. Telling that story though is, is beautiful, man. I, I like. I'm looking forward to seeing more content like that from you, like seeing your father again, right? Just those touch points, because you have. I feel like those touch points are those moments that, like they they create like clear, like milestones, right? You you drop content, 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 and it's viral as something and go. A lot of it is in the moment still they feed us but then things like that that might not necessarily go as viral to people that don't know you everybody who's following they're gonna not forget that moment you right, know what i mean right. and more moments like that would be real cool for me yeah like i didn't everywhere i go i meet people that are like yo how is africa and i'm like i didn't even know you cared i didn't even know you follow me but Bro, people get educated <laughs> like so especially as a black person right like that's here based right generations here is like a lot of it's education for us right there's just like uh, you know voyeurism to it where it's just like oh man that's cool like it would be nice to go over there or just to see that story so there's all there's that aspect of the diaspora that just kind of has that yearning to c connect or just to know more mm -hmm. and then some of it's just cool like i remember when i i texted you i was like what's the downfall and yeah, you yeah, explained yeah. it to me, and then I looked it up and everything, and I was like, oh, so the bars made even yeah, more sense. So I was yeah. like, oh, man, right? <laughs> so, like, just by, like, putting that information out there, like, yeah. again, like, and then once you learn from somebody, you feel even more connected mm -hmm. from it. Like, so there's, like, an educational piece to the general entertainment piece to what you're doing for sure, bro. Yeah, thank you. Nah, yeah. Well, now, you said that you want to do shit beyond the music, right? Yeah. Uh, I know you, you know, don't want to get it too ahead of yourself. I, I know you haven't done everything you want to, to do in music, but what does that even look like? Shoot, foundations, helping more kids like myself, creative. In America, I want to help creative immigrants. I think I might call it something, creative immigrants, something. But then I want to do stuff in Nigeria. I want to do stuff in Africa. I want to see how I could add and create more infrastructure in Africa, maybe it's the music industry, because there's no, the government is trash. And so, because the government's trash, it, bore, it, it like spills down to everything under it. Entertainment infrastructure is trash. You know, it's like, it's so bad, man, it's bad. I, mean, I can't even get to like the specifics, but, so those are some things that I, I kind of like want to do, um, foundations, apparel more fashion stuff that's like front facing um i love acai bowls what's that oh acai okay yeah 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 that's a you don't hear that <laughs> <laughs> so i'm even trying to figure out more ways to like show that because i i love making it i be studying recipes like i look up where it's from it's from like south america like i be i'm a geek for like acai bowls and um, so I might, I might do some stuff like that, see if I can take it to like 
Nigeria and what does that look like? Yeah. But it's the Mr. Beast full blown. Yeah. So as soon as I see, yeah, when I see when I see him doing that stuff, I'm like, oh, I'm already thinking in that space. I just gotta do it. And I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I mean kinda I kinda wanna talk about it. you you mentioned um you know the the entertainment culture not being the greatest over there. And I saw this tweet yesterday that says something along the line. I might be paraphrasing, but it says something along the lines of ever since American culture adopted Afrobeats, it's been feeling like the music and culture has, has been watered down. Um, one, I just want to get like your thoughts in, in general on, on that. And I'll find the exact tweet like once we got off camera to, to show it to you, but just want to get your thoughts around the sentiments of that. And then two here, do you think that has something to do with the fact that the, the entertainment infrastructure over there may not be as, as I guess, well developed as, as America's entertainment infrastructure? So you said... It, it was, I, I have to find I, it. I, 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 yeah, you I got, got it. it. You got I'm, it. Okay. I'm assuming it's the same one. Afrobeats is quite boring now. Thank you, American yeah. labels. Who's, who tweeted that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know him. I don't know if that's a fan. I don't know. Oh, if he says that, that's that's deep because he's a boss. Um, I think they might have a hand in it because what my fear for Afro Beats is losing creative control because labels will probably want to repeat, not even want to, they're trying to. So when you think of like a essence or like a um, last lives or yay or if, those are the only types of beats people send me. Ah, uh, okay. And so I don't, I, like I, that's, I actually never, I barely ask for beats from people. And it, nowadays I just be like, send me loops. Don't send me Afrobeat loops, send me R&B loops. I will do my drums. I will make it, you know what I'm saying? Because um, starting from the label, they're trying to reproduce something that's already been done. And sometimes it works if you figure out your own way to, to um, present it, but like they want to do it the exact same way as those songs because that's their only example. And they're not that exposed versus like doing the homework, going to Africa, going to Nigeria, going to Ghana, Learning high life. What is the history of Afro beats? Afro beats. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're not really, they're just thinking money, 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 money. And so when that happens, it becomes watered down. And you see people, man, I mean, I have to throw shots, man. I'm about, I'm about to say something we were talking about yesterday. You <laughs> see people. You just see them, man, doing weird shit. And you're like, that is that is not like African. Yeah, that feels dangerous though, right? To have a music genre that's uh, very resembling of a specific culture to take off without people necessarily trying to educate people on the culture. Like it yeah. feels like a dangerous move to make. Would you say? Yeah, that? yeah, it is, man. And like, it's very selfish because you're just thinking the dollar signs. You you don't really it's slavery, man. This is, we just back to slavery, just in a, in a different way. Like, it's just, that's, that's just what it is. Oh, you're not in physical change, but we're going to figure out something. And then if you look at the deals they offer these people, oh, my Lord. Yeah. Dog, <laughs> them joints be awful. And because the people back home aren't educated, what they get seems great. No. So that's why I'm like, I feel like being here is my superpower. Because I understand both worlds. And I could figure out a way to help other artists like myself or at home, like l really leverage, you know, a bunch of things. So, how much do you think Afrobeats needs America in, from the sense that it's such worldly music, right? It feels like, like that's the best way to say it. Like, like Latin, similar to Latin music, both of those two genres, like, feel like. The, the, the energy is infectious regardless, mm -hmm. right? You know, no matter if someone understands the words or anything, it could be played across um, a lot of places where a lot of artists that come out of America, well, specifically what we're seeing in hip hop right now, some of the things have limitations within America, right? And I don't feel like 
I don't I feel like because of globalization, there's not as much of a need to for America for validation. Do you see it that way or is there still a level of of need to, to make that connection? Because I do talk with a lot of artists, uh, I release artists, they're still like, hey, bro, we need you to help us pop over here. And it's like, I don't know if y'all need it like that. I I think it's that it's layered because the American music industry is like the ultimate example in music globally, kind of. And I think that's because they have infrastructure. And so when you're coming from a place with no infrastructure, you're kind of like looking at that as if that's the best example, but you don't even realize the flaws in that infrastructure. So whatever is presented, you take. And um, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think we necessarily need America, I think, I think it'll be it'll be very good, which is happening, if we could find a good partnership between like the industry and African artists, so that the sound could penetrate more, penetrate more in an authentic way and hit more people. I don't think it's a need thing. I think it's for some people it's a want thing, but it'll be good. Because if you think about like uh, what like Bad Bunny is doing, he doesn't. I don't. I, I don't look at his numbers or his stats, but I don't think he doesn't need America. Yeah, that boy. That guy be that boy going crazy. But another thing is that because yeah, I don't think we need America, man. Like Whiskey, Whiskey been selling ten thousand, twenty thousand tickets before America. Exactly, that's my point. <laughs> you know, but but. When you go to when you go to Africa, you you'll see that America is like the super giant. America's always been the super giant for Africa, and so anything American to some people is like, oh my God, I want it. And so I feel like that's why some people still seek that validation. Versus me, when I'm here, I'm like, it's not that. F- it's cool. Yeah. It's cool, but like, we can make a lot of things move in Africa too. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's. It's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's a, that answered the question. Yeah, I, I get it, man. I just don't want it to be a repeat of, you know, you saw hip hop, right? And it was the cool, and then a lot of things started to be hijacked. And it feels like, in some ways, mentality wise, it's, it's, it's a repeat where, like, it's like, it, this, y'all have the cool, right? Y'all have the control, y'all have the leverage. Just don't. Like, and it's working because of what it is, yeah. and it's not like like us. But then there's some people who want that validation. It's like, now nah, as long as y'all keep doing what y'all are doing, that's gonna stay, yeah. stay cool. So yeah, that's that's why I asked. Yeah, that's why I like why you brought up Bad Bunny because I feel like Latin music did it right in that way, right? Like it's yeah. like, hey, we figured out a way to be appreciated by the American audience, but we don't really need y'all. You know what I'm saying? Our artists gonna, yeah, our artists gonna go crazy whether or not y'all rock with us. We were going crazy before, we're going crazy because y'all do. And if y'all stop doing it, we still we still, still gonna be going crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I feel like there's only a few artists that think like that. Just I just noticed based off of like conversation with them, um, but only a few African artists think like that. I meet some that are like dying to be accepted. So yeah, got you, got you. Now, like taking it back to your music, man. How do you how do you choose your subject matter? It's feeling based. Um, I'm always thinking about my story and I'm always thinking about stories. And so it like it's just feeling based. I I start off with a lot of mumbles and I try to find themes in those mumbles and how does this make you feel? Does this feel like plants or does this feel like water? Like I, I ask people those questions like that all the time, like what does this make you feel like doing? You wanna punch somebody, you wanna love, you wanna dance? And then from there, I'm like, okay, do I have anything internally that I can create and share as part of my story? Or what are some stories that people shared with me that I can help them tell through this song? And so, yeah, those are like the, those are like the two main spaces, I think. I don't, I don't, 
I don't really do much outside of that. And I just try to simplify my process now, too. I try not to overthink it. Yeah. So, like, a song like, or one, one that was one of my favorites for, for so long was so good, right? Where, was that, like, based off of, like, old relationship? Or is that just, like, feeling this is what this beat feels like? Or do you not create the song before you hear the beat? It depends. But so but that song, um, I came across I I was just I saw a bunch of like black, beautiful black women and I was like, damn, they look so good. <laughs> Literally. It was just like a bunch of beautiful black women and when I made the beat, I was just like, Oh, you look so good. Don't know how you do it. Always change the vibe when I see you on my line. Mm, Tama. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just very, like, I didn't even, I just wrote it, left it, didn't touch it. Let's, next thing. Everybody praise, praises the power in your phrases. Feel it in my mind that you're so divine. You know what I'm saying? Like, just trying to connect that experience that I had while scrolling on Instagram, turning it into a song. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had women tell me, like, that's how they want to be spoken to. That's another thing I figured out. <laughs> I was like, because I used to like, when I first started making music, my joints were hard. And I used to rap a lot. Like, even if I, even when I wasn't rapping, my singing was like harsh. And I was like, it was harsh and hard. And then I just see a bunch of niggas in my comments, in my shows. And I was like, yeah, we're going to have to switch it up a little bit. Definitely want more women listening to my stuff. And <laughs> no, but I literally sat down. I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not rapping anymore. <laughs> I'm so serious. But <laughs> and um, when I realized that, like, at least the type of women that I wanted to speak to, and that I find myself attracted to, they wanted to be spoken to in that way. I'm gonna just make songs for y'all. And the crowds fill up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now you niggas be finding their girlfriends in my shows now. I was about to say, man, as a as a fan, bro, I, I, I appreciate you for making that move. You know hey what I'm man, <laughs> like, I appreciate you. They for be doing finding it. it. Look, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> oh man, this that's actually really dope to see because it speaks to the power of one, the choices, right? And how I always say it's all marketing whether you want it to be or not, right? Mm -hmm. Like you put out the energy to the vibe of the party that you want to create and you attract that party, right? You can attract, look like a bunch of niggas, you can attract some women that's gonna come to twerk, you can attract some women that's gonna come to like let's vibe out, let's dress up a little bit more classy. And it could be that same woman that would be comfort to twerk, but it's yeah. just a different energy, right? Exactly. So like, what would, I mean, you basically just touched on that, realizing the power in your words, right? In the same way we just talked about so good, and you speak of the power of um, a woman's words, like how, how does that even feel, right? To see that you actually made that decision and it actually created the world around you. It feels crazy, man. It's like, it's such a, it's very empowering because I think a lot. And when I think of doing certain things, I'm always like, is this gonna translate? I don't know, let me try it. Mm -hmm. And so when I try it and I see it translate, and like, all I need is one like from the type of person I'm trying to attract. Mm -hmm. The moment I found that one like, like early on, now I can't do that because it's too many. Like, it's a lot. But um, early on when I switched and I made that decision, I would just look at the women that started following me. Or just people in general, not just even women. Just like, if it was a guy, I'd look, look at his page. I'd look at who he's following. He's following the type of women that listen to my music. I'm like, got him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so I, just, I made that conscious decision. And I just kept going with it. Yeah. Do you put that in your content too? Absolutely. Man, there's a reason why I was watering plants. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. You yeah. think I was watering plants? I don't got... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> for revealing too much, for revealing too much. <laughs> I have plans. Hey, man. But I'm not like... You a problem, I don't man. Know, I can tell, man. You I don't <laughs> know plants like people do, you know what I'm saying? But I just, people like plants, all right. Yeah. I'm going to buy plants. And it makes my apartment look good. Cool. Yeah. This is my plant. This is, yeah. Do you have any acting aspirations? No. Uh, you've been doing a little bit more acting I lately, know. though. So I just, I'm good at it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Man, I'll just be like, look, I'm trying to get more people to listen to this music, and I'm going to just try more stuff. And um, I noticed that some other people would try, like, skits, but I'm always thinking, how do I make it? How does it cater to my audience? The audience that I have and the audience that I want. And... Um, I tried it. I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna do as much as I did. All the stuff we shot, we shot it in one day. I just come up with the concept and we go. There's no, it's not much scripts. I just tell them key things to hit on and then we go. And so a lot of them are friends. So it feels natural. It's like, we have all those types of conversations in DMV slang, in my African Nigerian slang. You know, I might bring a Yoruba one. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. But doing those skits, I realized that I was a good actor. Yeah. But I, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't yeah, this, it's a, Acting is like, if I want to do acting, I'd really want to study it. Because I, when I do something, I want to be the greatest. I want to be the best like, that I could be in it versus half-assing it. Yeah. Like, if an acting role comes now and it's not tedious and it doesn't require me to do a lot, I'd probably take it. It's a nice bag. You know, but not like I wouldn't try to be Will Smith or Denzel Washington today. No. Yeah. 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 So you just recognize the art in itself and you respect that. Oh, yeah. I respect it way too much. But I do want to score music for movies. I want to produce movies and I want to um, direct more visuals. I wouldn't say movies, but just more visual stuff. For yourself or other people? For other people. Have you already been getting like asked from other artists to do th things like that? Um, not. I've been talking to some fire people, and that are doing some crazy things, and they're like, "Bruh, you're great." So whenever we have something, we are gonna like let you know. Yeah. So I'm just waiting for that call, cause I got ideas. I have a lot of ideas that I can't do because it doesn't even fit my brand, but it'll fit other artists. Right. Yeah. Hmm. That's a, again, we go back to decisions, right? Like you have these ideas, because as a creative, now we know so many people have these boxes they feel like they're in, they're trying to escape, right? It's like, I got all these ideas. I want to be able to do everything and be recognized for everything. That's how some people go. But then you have people like you who are like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And I have the ideas. I'm going to use other people as yeah. the vessel to get those ideas out. Yeah. So what, what makes you say, yeah, I want to, I'm cool with keeping this box, quote unquote, around myself and then just allowing my expression to come through other people. I think like, it's just all decisions and focus. I don't want to lose focus because I know like, I just have a good understanding of my main purpose and the steps there is, there's required to accomplish all the missions and things that I feel like God has placed in my heart. And so I am great at making music. So how do we make sure the world knows that Manny Rose is the greatest? First, if that is not at the forefront right now, unless God bumps me and is like, take this, this might help that, I don't, I don't want to lose focus and try to like do it too much because that might just alter my mission or my purpose. That's what I feel. Um, but focus is really important. Like a, lot of, like a lot of successful people that I look up to are like very focused. They just focus on this and they get it done. And so for me, it's like, because I'm so creative, if I don't focus, I'd be everywhere. I'd, I'd direct that movie, I'd direct that video, I'd make the song with this person, I'd act in it, I'd make their next clothes, I would style them. I would make the next acai bowl today. I would make the, make the next restaurant. I'll make the dopest record. Like, 
It's a lot. But I have a whole life to, to do that. And by the grace of God, I live a long life. And so I'm not in no rush, man. Right now is do this music thing, get it to a, a dope level, help somebody else, next thing. Look at it, everything in phases and stages, so. So, so. Now, um, I want to ask you this question, man, and not necessarily in the context of music. What do you think when you hear the term no labels? When I hear no labels, I hear like there's, there are no limits. We could, I could do whatever. There's like, as creatives, we, we feel like labels box us in. So as a creative, when I hear that, I'm like, oh, I could do whatever. But um, and I think that's why I, I, I love that name too, because it just makes sense for like the content that is needed, that artists need to watch and marketing people and the industry in general. It's like they need to see that, that you, can, you can pick a route and you can be great at it. You can sign, you can be independent, you can find uh, a middle ground between both, find, make partnerships, like all that stuff is dope. And so that's, that's what I hear, like there's no, uh, there aren't any limits. But, but yeah. Well, hey man, appreciate you pulling up, bro. It's been a pleasure to have you on this channel since, yes, sir. you know, man. We, we've had conversations over the years and we knew this we knew this day was gonna happen. Like me and Jacory knew this day was gonna happen yeah. one day. Like, man, he's somebody we gotta get on the channel. We've been talking saying that for years. Yeah, and you just kept, you know, coming bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful, man. I'm I'm I've been a fan since like man, I've been a fan since it was just you and you had your own page and you was talking about ad like I've been a like I, like I learned how to run YouTube ads well from you. You know what I'm saying? Then you got when y'all like started working together, I was like, oh this is hard. Like <laughs> this is not a little crazy. Like I've been I've been tapped in. So I'm I'm really thankful to God for like the growth that you guys have. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, appreciate appreciate you. It, man. He was a part of that man. So we appreciate you too. 100 percent 100 percent Well yo folks, this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. Many Wells. And we out. Peace. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play and courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.